kettle. And what did you achieve? Well, look, I can turn on my kettle. Well, all right. So I've got mixed feelings about this because I drink a lot of tea. <laughs> <laughs> I, when i heard you saying that i'm like i would go amazon one right now man if i can if i can iot my kettle like come on yeah then you just watch some uh some security conference stuff where they actually hack an eye kettle right well see that's the prop see the problem isn't the the easeability of me heating my water that's a valid idea. That's something that exists in the future. The problem is these people putting out these startups and these products with no regard to security. Exactly. Um, there was an issue with the, I think it was the Nissan Leaf. There's a guy, I don't know if you ever heard about Troy Hunt. No, I haven't heard about this. Let's uh, hear about the Leaf. I think it was Troy Hunt and Scott Helmy. They, I think Scott is living in Norway and Troy is living in Australia. So they recorded a, a small video episode with Scott in his car, Troy sitting by the pool with this laptop, and he started the heating in the car from Australia. And this was uh, like a hack. Yeah, uh, or hack and hack. Uh, it was more a stupidly open API. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> That's so so was... he actually took the title of stupid security researcher on conferences after that because people flamed him, flamed him to hell for like, yeah, you broke my remote control of my leaf now. The, um, I was talking with my dad. He, uh, engineer, pulled me into programming. And... We were having a conversation. Did you see that video going around? I believe it was Europe, um, where they had these car thieves that were RF hacking the keys for like Teslas or some other types of e-cars. And they were, have you seen that video? Mm, not sure I've seen that exact one, but I've seen All right, seen so this is how it would happen. There was two boxes and two thieves, okay? Mm -hmm. One thief would be standing with his box about one foot by one foot next to the car. The other thief would be standing with his box and holding it up to the garage or holding it up to a window or something of that nature. And what they were doing was they were getting the key fob in the house to respond and then they were cloning it. That device would clone it and then the other individual would unlock it and uh, open the car and drive away. Yeah, it, it, make, it makes totally sense. I'm pretty sure I've seen it now. It's like yeah. a, a, a night photo. Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, then I've seen it. That's like a really good reason to never have your keys in near the front door. Well, you know, well, first of all, the Tesla keys, I don't think it was definitely probably not a Tesla. And let's no, just say so. it wasn't because I like Elon. And uh, so I use his first name because I'm hoping like when he hears this, <laughs> he's going to be like, oh, that's my bro, right? And then, what up? <laughs> what up, bro? I'll be like, oh, not much, man. a free car. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, but I will hang out with you for a little bit. Um, so... I was talking to my dad about it and I said, you know, this is a, a classic case of lazy developers because there's no reason why that should have been such an open, easy thing to do to clone. Like where's the, where's the one off. And if it, if it did clone, like, shouldn't they have been doing a setup where it was a one-off use key every time that the transmission occurred? Shouldn't that be a one-time use key? Uh, or did they have inside information and they were maybe previous developers or had an in at the company so they knew what they were salting with or how the technologies worked internally? Like, I'm, I'm always curious. I, I want to know if those guys are really smart nerds or if it was really lazy developers. <laughs> um, I think it's a mix because behind all of those guys are some really clever people and they sell, like, they sell the vulnerability and make some money off it. That's that is like true. The, the pr prime thing to buy on 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 the dark web. You gotta say it with like a deep voice to make sure that people on understand the dark web. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're gonna be like the Batman of the dark web, Stefan. <laughs> no, definitely not. Never been there. Don't dare to go there. You never know what you're gonna get. Get it's, back on your feet after going there. It's the tights, isn't it? You don't want to wear the tights. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with tights. You're okay with tights. <laughs> All yeah. right. That's uh so any you should give um you should give a talk called tights and the internet of things. <laughs> we we were actually talking about doing like a dual session on what developers should respond to in uh, in physical training and we we were talking about doing like a two person thing so whenever one talked the other one should do exercises but it, it never really caught on to to a perfect idea. So it's like pair programming but with exercise. Yeah, and imagine doing a presentation. You're just trying to catch your wind again. And you're like, yeah, and then you want <gasps> <laughs> CrossFit meets programming. Yeah, exactly.
There you it, go. Will be, it will be sounding like Darth Vader or something like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> red, green, refactor. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs>